Hi, welcome to this video where today we're going to learn what it means to solve a linear equation by graphing. So, so far you know how to just solve a basic equation. If I gave you this equation, negative 2x plus 6 equals 0, you would go ahead and you could just simply solve for x. You would subtract 6 on both sides and divide both sides by negative 2 to solve for x. But we also now know what it means to graph a function. If I gave you this function, f of x equals negative 2x plus 6, like if I replace that 0 with an f of x, or I replace that 0 with a y equals, which is our function notation, that f of x, it means basically the same as y for right now. If I could graph that, I could make a table, I could find my intercepts, we know how to do anything at that point. But what we're going to learn today is that these two are directly related. And I'm going to show you why in just a moment. Now, some new terminology for us. The word zero, and you're going to hear this later on in um, Algebra 1 as well when we talk about quadratics and calculating the zeros. But for right now, we're just in linear equations. The zero of a function are the value or values of x that make f of x equal zero or y equal zero which we already know, when you calculate y equals 0, you're really figuring out the x-intercept. And another name for that x-intercept is called the root. So the 0 of a function is the x-intercept. The way we find the x-intercept is we set y equal to 0, and we call that x-intercept our root. They're all connected to each other. So here's what I'm talking about. What does any of this mean? Let's go back to that equation that I gave you before. If I gave you this equation, 0 equals negative 2x plus 6, and I said to you, go ahead, solve this equation, you would say, okay, I'm going to subtract 6 on both sides, no problem, and then I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2, no problem. And you end up getting the solution of x equals 3. Not difficult at all. But let's then say you went ahead and we wanted to graph this function. So instead of 0 equals and solving the equation, what if I replace that 0 with y, and I graphed it? Now, one of the methods of graphing is just simply making a table. So if I, let's say, made some, a table, and I made a table of x values 0, 1, 2, 3, and I started substituting them in to get my y's, so let's say negative 2 times 0 is 0, plus 6 is 6. Let's plug in a 1. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, plus 6 is 4. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4, plus 6 is 2. A negative 2 times 3 is negative 6, plus 6 is 0. And then let's say I went ahead and I decided to plot those points. So 0, 6, 1, 4, 2, 2, and then 3, 0. That 2, 2 is a little, I should fix it, right about there. And I connect my points because I'm making that line. And what I want you to notice, and you can see I have an arrow pointing to it, is look at this. The x-intercept, which is where y is equal to 0, look at that number. That number there is at 3. The x-intercept is 3, 0. Look at our solution. x is equal to 3. When y is equal to 0, our x equals 3. The same value we get as a, an as a solution to our equation I need to fix up my words, is the same thing we get as the x-intercept when we graph that equation as a function. It's the same number. It's not a coincidence, guys. It's always going to be that way. So setting an equation equal to 0 and solving for x is the same thing as replacing that 0 with y and graphing it. The x-intercept is the same value that we get for our equation. So if I then said to you, hey, take these two equations and find the 0, what we really need to know is finding the zero simply means to calculate x. And the way you calculate your x-intercept is you substitute y with zero. So finding the zero of a function is simply going to mean set y equal to zero to solve for x. And then once you set y equal to zero to solve for x, it's just business as usual with your regular solving equation skills. So you would subtract 160 on both sides, divide both sides by negative 2, and you would get 80. If I took this equation and I wanted to find the zero, finding the zero means to find the x-intercept. To find the x-intercept, you plug in a zero for y. We would subtract 20 on both sides and then divide both sides by negative 0.5 and you would get 40. If I was to graph this function, guess where it's going to cross the x-axis? At 80. If I was to graph this function, guess where it's going to cross the x-axis? At 40. 